her a lot. Um, <laughs> so the garden, we our goal was to address three major issues that we saw with the garden. Um, first, a lack of systems to track the plants and different plants and foods that we have on the garden. Um, and then second, to improve the community engagement. Um, and then lastly, to bolster the educational aspects of the garden. Um, so here we can see a map of the garden. Um, and this is just from Google Earth. And but the sort of system that they currently have with the is just like a pretty simple map of like things that they think is on the garden. Um, but like from this scale, you can only see like the trees, uh, but you can identify trees at the moment. They look kind of pixelated. Um, and having a better understanding of what is there will bolster what you can do with community engagement and reducing the amount of food waste that there is. Um, so we went out and we measured where all the trees were um, and all of the beds, and then sort of identified as much of the plants as we could. Um, a few of these are, so the light green, the plants that we haven't identified, um, and then the other ones, there's like a variety of like peaches and plum, not plums, um, persimmons, um, apples, definitely. Um, but then there's also lots of green space that isn't being used, um, particularly those like those surrounding there, um, where there's plans to have a potential greenhouse, the meeting space. Um, yeah. And as Marvin mentioned, there is a lot of food waste, a lot of fruits that are wasted in the garden. Uh, pictured here are some passion fruits that were left to rot because there weren't enough people to go harvest them. Uh, not pictured here are the passion fruits that just fell because they were unripened and rotting in the garden as well. And so we think that having a better tracking system of the fruits and the other produce in the garden can help reduce the waste because then they'll know when, where the plants are, when it is that they should be harvested, and how much could be harvested, given to the community, or sold if necessary. So an example of a tracking system could use the map. And pictured here is just two parts of the map just blown up that has a lot of fruits. Uh, here we have like apples, peaches, uh, some lemons, and passion fruit. And it's, basic, it's very simple. It is a map of like 12 quadrants representing the 12 months of the year. And so then you can see when the fruiting and the flowering season of the, each of the plants are. So for example, with the apples, they'll start flowering in July and the end of the season is, about, is around October, November. That, so then you can have, uh, coordinate with the community to have maybe apple picking or something of the sort so that the community will be better involved. In addition, you could have a calendar of the plant fruiting and harvesting seasons so that either you can look at the map or look at this calendar and know exactly what needs to be done at what time. In addition, uh, we are wor uh, they're working with this company Autodesk at the LACI that will make the map a bit more uh, professional than the one that we were able to scavenge. And so then they'll have a better way to track the food so that it not as much is wasted. In addition, if they have people from the community involved, then it's easier for them to be able to look at the environment, the fruit. Yeah. So in addition to food wasted, there's space that's wasted. Um, so. A major issue for the garden is the lack of volunteers, um, and that tends to be an issue for a nonprofit where um, spaces like these could be utilized for things where the people from the community come in and make the space their own, um, create um, raised beds. Um, in a space like this, though, there's like lots of shade, but people could utilize it for different things. But determining what the people want from this garden um, is a first step to getting that vision realized. Um, 
So this space along with the one next to it, and then there's other spaces along the garden that are empty. Um, but you can envision something like this, where you ask the community, like, do you want raised beds? Um, and are you willing to plant the raised beds? Um, what do you see and want to see in the raised beds? Do you want um, just to have fruit trees that you can come pick from? Um, and you can get food, utilize the space in different ways, or would you like to just relax and have a space to interact with the native environment um, where within Watts, this is a nice green space. Um, so we helped plot these uh, raised beds with a community organization called College Track. Um, and that was a great way to see um, how these spaces could be made better by incorporating different members of the community. A uh, picture here is one of the beds, or one of the many beds, there are about 16 not raised beds, so I guess flat beds in the garden, and currently they're all unutilized, but the, we are working, or the people at the Watts Community Healing Garden are working with the LAUSD to involve the Edwin Markham Middle School in addition to other schools in the Watts area to develop a curriculum to use this space and to cultivate the plots. So hopefully that will get underway, but as, of, as it is right now, it is sadly not used and it's a lot of space that is unused. And so in terms of how this space could potentially be used, there, there are many, many uh, growing schedules online that people can look at. So for example, in the spring, they can perhaps grow like basils, beans, and strawberries because there is a lot of space currently not used. <coughs> and you can, have, you can engage the community even more by having like a strawberry picking exercise with the people. And uh, there is the whole idea of a community supported agriculture type uh, situation where the people from the community, not just those from the schools, could come, perhaps grow their own food and harvest what they grow, which would make them more engaged. And uh, one of the problems they think is that the people of Watts don't want things handed to them. So by having them grow their own food, they can, uh, be better engaged. So um, the last aspect of the garden that we attempt to ameliorate is the educational aspect. So the um, garden itself is situated near the school um, and is an integral part of the school in that there's an agricultural um, class that students can take. And students get to interact with the garden, plant plants, um, and even take plants home, which bolsters this idea of being like an urban gardener. Um, the garden is connected with the LACS, so it has this um, plan to be a both technical and agriculturally educational space. Um, so in addition to the technological side, we wanted to create a native plant garden. Um, so this is the current space that is allotted for the plant garden. There's some native plants there already. Um, but then there's a few non-natives and just kind of fruit trees that don't mix in. But for this space, we had a vision of creating a um, like paths through the garden um, and then also including a wider diversity of plants from throughout California. Um, these plants don't require as much water um, and there's a variety of ethnobotanical ethno um, uses that could be done with these plants. Um, and students can be educated on the environment and nature that is surrounding them. Um, so here's an example of what we created, um, where we have a few plants that both educate students about ethnobotanical, um, although we would like to increase that. Um, but there's also interest in pollination, so bees and butterflies. Um, and then other plants that have sort of medicinal properties like the salvias along the barter, um, but in general, creating the space for students to interact with the environment is great to see 
um, especially when they're so separated from other green spaces that are in the LA community. One thing that is missing from our plan is edible uh, native plants, which we would like to include in any future uh, plans. <laughs>